Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial. So I recently made this animation here on, um, as you see here on Instagram. Well, I didn't make it on Instagram, I made it in Blender and I posted it on Instagram. So today I'm not gonna be showing you how to make this complete scene that you see here, but I'm gonna be showing you the, te the technique here, the main animation that's going on here that looks kind of intricate, but it really isn't. So this is the scene we're gonna be making today. Um, and I really would recommend you try this out. It's really fun and it's just an exciting little tutorial and I really enjoyed making and putting it together. So this is this is the project where this is what you see here. So it looks quite like quite a lot, but what it is is just two simple objects we've animated. There's some really basic rotation and location um, keyframing. And then we've just parented to an empty and then parented that empty to this plank here and just kind of made it all work together. I'm gonna to go step by step how we do it. I think you guys are really gonna find this quite educational. By the way, you guys who are on Patreon will be getting this scene file of mine. My, um, sometimes every now and then I'll put um, for the tier two and up, I will put some of my um, Instagram projects on there for people to check out. And a lot of you guys really have been enjoying that and telling me about it. So let's get into this tutorial. I think you guys are gonna, yeah, learn something really awesome. Okay, so for a brand new scene opened up in Blender 2.83, what we're gonna do is hit A to select everything and then X and delete. Um, I like to go to my front orthographic view when I'm, whenever I'm doing something. So I'm just gonna go to front orthographic, hitting one on my number pad, and then I'm gonna go Shift A. Go to my mesh options here, and I'm gonna go down and add in a cylinder. With this cylinder selected, I'm gonna go R, X, and 9, 0, and hit enter. And then I'm gonna just go S, Y, point three and hit enter. So that's gonna scale it along the Y axis by um, point three. So that's gonna be our dimensions here. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and go control A and just apply the scale. And because we initially rotated it as it was going upwards, we are gonna go control A and also apply the rotation. If you hear the um, jet ski in the back, I do apologize for that because I live in like in front of the ocean. So there's a guy at the front kind of going around with his jet ski. So I hope that doesn't bother anybody too much. Anyway, so let's hit N to open up our properties panel here. So you should see here, if you go up, you can see item. And then you can see here our locations should be at zero and all of our rotation constraints should also be at zero because we've applied the scale and the rotation. So let's just quickly do some basic modeling with this here. So first of all, let's just go to our modifiers tab, just add a modifier and let's add in a bevel. Let's make the limit method an angle and the offset we're gonna just decrease. Um, something like 0.04 is okay. You don't have to, this doesn't really matter. It's not important. So make it whatever you want. You can make it big, small, but I'm just gonna go with something like that. Maybe three segments and then just go add and add in a subdivision modifier and go to object and just enable shade smooth. So we should have something like this. So just minimize these two here to clean that up a bit. And let's do some basic modeling. So just tab into edit mode. And if you hit K on your number pad, um, your keypad, you can click on this vertice here and just go to this vertice in the side of it and click on it and then hit enter. So we're just gonna add in a cut over here and then we're gonna go K, click on this vertice, go to the side here and click on this and then hit enter. And the reason we're doing this is because we wanna add two different colors to this so we can actually see it rotating. Otherwise, it's not gonna really be that apparent in our viewport. So let's just go to our materials here. We're gonna, um, by default, you should have a material already added to this, the default material, or you can just go ahead and create one. So let's just make this material in the viewport for now, something like a red or whatever. And then let's just click on here, make another material, go new, and let's just go to our face select, or yeah, just click on your face select here and then go into your, hit Z to go into your wireframe, and then go B and click on here and just box select these bottom vertices. And in that new material we created, we're just gonna go assign. So we should now see two materials. This is really important because it, like I said, if, if we didn't have these two different materials, you know, we wouldn't, the rotation wouldn't be as apparent. So you can see over here, it's kind of the issue we'd have. So that's why we're doing that. So with this done, let's go and add in our cylinder here, not our cylinder, our sphere that's gonna be sitting on the top. So I'm gonna go shift A, and then I'm gonna to go to my mesh options and add in a UV sphere. With this UV sphere selected, I'm gonna to go to my modifiers tab, go to add modifier, we're gonna add in a subdivision surface modifier, go to my object and let's just go and make this shade smooth. So we wanna scale this guy while we have it selected. So we're gonna go S.5 and hit enter. And, and whenever we kind of like, 
going to do any sort of animation. It's important to apply our scales and rotation most of the time. Um, it probably doesn't matter so much with the scale here because we're not going to be animating that, but let's just do it anyway. So control A and just apply the scale. And then if we go G, Z, and we hold in control, we can move this up and it's going to keep clicking or um, snapping, I should say, to the, the grid here. And we want to move it just so it snaps above here. So you'll kind of feel it if you do that. And let's just do the same thing with the colors here. It's going to be just as important. So go into wireframe, um, go to your materials, just add in that first material here. Then click on the plus sign and don't go new, but rather click on here and just give it that material um, 001. And then you're going to go B, click on here and box select like the bottom um, faces here and just assign that material. So we should have the same thing going on here like so. So we have our cylinder in the bottom with all of these location and rotation vectors at zero. And we got this guy here and um, the location vectors we need to apply. Um, no, we don't need to apply the location of this one. So just leave it as it is, that'll be fine. So now we can start getting into some of our animation. So what we're gonna do first of all is just hover over here, just give ourselves a little bit more real estate to pull this up. And if you roll your middle mouse wheel, you can bring this in a little bit. And what I'm going to do is make sure I'm in frame one. By default, you should be. And on frame one, we're going to grab both of these guys here. And then we're going to go hit I on our number pad. And we're going to insert a location keyframe. And that's because we have them both selected. It's going to do that to both of them. As you can see here, both of them have that done to them. So just select them both again, holding shift. And then what we're going to do is go to frame 40, like so. And then frame 40, we're gonna move this guy first. Okay, so we wanna move this guy on the um, X location, okay? Um, negative on the X location, which is gonna be to our left here on the screen. So um, we wanna move it by a measurement of six. So we're gonna type in negative six and hit enter. And on frame 40, we're gonna go I and insert a keyframe. So we should see this, okay? And I think this was looking a little bit fast. So what I might do is just grab this guy, like uh, drag the little box over it and just go G and just go to frame 80 with it like that. So it should be like this. Okay, that's looking really good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it rotate because we already on frame one um, inserted a keyframe for our rotation with this guy. Um, doesn't seem to have, so let's just make sure we do it. Let's just go I and insert a rotation keyframe. Okay, so this should be yellow on frame one, and then we're gonna drag it to frame 80. And then frame 80, as it is moving in a negative X value um, to a unit of six meters, we want it to also rotate on its Y axis, its local Y. So let's come over here on frame 80 and make this value here 300 for now. So type in 300 and then Hovering over it, hit I and insert a keyframe. So now as it's moving across the X axis in a negative, it should be rotating at the same time. Okay, so at the moment it's not rotating the right way. So let's just go to frame 80 again. And let's just make this negative 300. So just type in minus 300 and hit enter. And just hit I again. Okay, so that should fix that problem. So let's look at that. And now we're seeing a nice rotation like so. That's looking really good. That's kind of what we wanted. Um, now, the reason I went with a value of 300 is because I found that it slides to anything more than that and it starts kind of sliding. It doesn't make sense. And anything less than that, it's, it's moving faster than it's turning. So this isn't, I didn't do any math on this. I kind of just did it till it felt right. But I'll quickly show you a little technique. So if you just go to frame one, what you can do is go shift A, just add in a cube. And then just go S to scale the cube down. Just bring it down here somewhere and then go R45 and hit enter in your front orthographic view. And now if you go on your, um, you go through here very slowly. Okay, you go to where this, um, these two, where these two colors meet, where they kind of touch the grid here. We're going to go G and move this guy here. So if we kind of go through it slowly, we should see it shouldn't slide too much away from that point as it's moving forward. And then we can keep moving along till the next point where it comes almost down at a 90 degree angle and go shift D, X and just move it up to here. So this is kind of like a quick and dirty way to do an animation like this. Um, a little bit of sliding won't be that noticeable. Um, but if you really 
finicky about it you can kind of like do the math on it but i didn't do anything like that so this is just kind of like something you can mess around with all you have to simply do is just keep coming to ad and just mess around with this value here and keep getting hitting i until you get something that makes sense and doesn't have too much sliding okay so let's go back to frame one and let's do the same with this guy now what we're going to do is on frame one we're going to go i and just insert a rotation keyframe so now we have a location and a rotation on um, frame one and this is slider to frame 80 and from a frame 80 we're going to go G and then we're going to go X and it's going to drag to the side holding and control to it sna snaps just right above this or other otherwise if you want to be more accurate just come here to the location and you can type in negative six and hit I so this is hit I hovering over here and insert a keyframe on frame 80 and then what we're going to do is the same thing on the Y value but with this one, we're going to go and type in 360 and hit enter and then go I. And with this one, we want to, um, the reason we're not doing negative, because this one is sitting on top of this sphere, it's got to be rotating the opposite way, if that makes sense. So that's why we're doing that. So in this one, both of them have a negative value on the Y rotation and the X location. But with the top one, we want to make that one different because it's kind of like the opposite reaction. So we should have this, it should look, um, it should make sense if, like I said, if you have any sliding, what you can do is just come here and adjust this value and hit I on frame 80 till it makes sense. But I'm gonna leave it at this. That's a nice little satisfying animation. And what you can simply do is hold in shift to select both of them. And then you can go and just box select these first vertices and go shift D and just drag them to frame uh, 160. So what we're gonna have is this. It's going to come over here nice and slow and then ease in and ease out back. And because by default Blender should be doing a um, busier interpolation on this, it should look quite smooth. So what we can do is just make sure, so just select both of them again, select all of these keyframes here and then go T and just make sure it's busier. It should be by default. If it was linear, it would just it would just stop too quickly and go back to where it was almost instantly and that just wouldn't look very physically pleasing nor accurate. So. We're gonna go with something like this, it looks really good. So now I'm gonna quickly show you how we can add that um, empty in here and make it kind of a little bit more interesting. So let's go Shift A, let's go to our empty here. We're gonna add in a cube on frame one. And then we're gonna grab both of these guys holding a Shift and then still holding a Shift, select the empty as a last object and go Control P, keep object and keep transform. So now if I were to, for example, just rotate this and play, then it's gonna go the same rotation. So we can now move this empty around but still have our animation happening separately. So that's looking really good. So what we can do now is go Shift A and just add in a mesh cube and then go S, Z, just scale it down. It doesn't have to be specific, um, just something like a little bridge. And then go S, X and make it, yeah, it doesn't, this long will be fine. It's just for demonstration, then go S, Y and just scale it a little bit. So just we have like this kind of like this plank looking thing. And then we can go Control A, just apply the scale and apply the rotation on that. I don't think we mess with the rotation, so it doesn't really matter. And I'm just gonna delete these two objects there, we don't need them. So what we can do now is grab this on frame one, grab this empty and go G, um, X, kind of move it over here, anywhere here to the side. And then holding in Control, I'm um, holding in Shift, we can click on this plank here and then go Control P and set parent to keep um, transform. So now, if I were to grab this guy and kind of rotate it like this a little bit and go I and insert a rotation key on frame one, it's gonna kind of be going down at a slope. And then what I can do is just kind of as it gets, not quite on frame 80, but just like at 60 or something, I can kind of um, go I, insert a rotation keyframe, and then on frame 80, I can slowly start making it tip up again like this slight little bit I and insert a rotation keyframe. So let's have a look at that. So it goes down and then suddenly goes up to kind of stop it and it starts rolling back like that. And you can kind of just bring these frames in. So let's bring that into our end frame value to 160. Let's have a look at that. And then you can grab this frame on keyframe on frame 80, go shift D and kind of slide it up to frame 140. And then on frame 160, we want it back to where it started. So let's just 
circle this guy here at the front, like hover, um, just box drag it and go shift D and just drag it to frame 160 so that it should, it should be loopable. So let's have a look at this. So go like that and then it goes back lifts at the last second and then it goes back. So here we have a nice, relatively complicated looking animation, but really all it is is some really basic animation and a little bit of trick trickery to make something look really awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Like I said, it's not a final product. We're not making like a lighting and, and anything like a fancy kind of scene or anything. It's just to show you guys this kind of technique. I hope you guys are able to implement it in your workflow, make something interesting out of it. I will be making my original scene that is on um, Instagram available on Patreon. So Patreon will be getting that. If you want to pull that apart, have a look at it, see what I did. I did that one a little bit more complicated, added a few more little things to it. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial and I hope you enjoyed.